No? All right, then we'll continue. Um, so this is what we have covered so far. Um, Maxwell's equations, the set of four equations, which I keep telling you describes everything we need to know about electricity and magnetism. I guess to tell you the truth, it's everything about electricity and magnetism as long as you are in vacuum. Um, because we keep using this permittivity of free space and permeability of free space. So once you start talking about something in a linear medium, then that's where you have to do a bunch of more stuff. That's a partition material. I'm not going to do that. Um, but you know, this equation describes everything we know about um, electricity and magnetism in vacuum. And so in the afternoon session, we just uh, um, I introduced these as the differential form. And I wrote down some stuff to, for those of you who have not taken math 3C, so that these new symbols you are seeing makes some sense. This is a vector operator that takes this form. And when you are using it, you use it more or less like a vector. So when you take a dot product, it looks like a dot product. And when you take a cross product, it looks like a cross product with some care in the ordering of the terms. So um, there was some, oh, and I guess this is really for people who have taken Math 3C or are currently taking it. Um, you can actually see easily, or not too, with not too difficulty, not too much difficulty, you can go from here to here. It's actually more difficult to go, to go the other way. That's why I don't bother trying to derive these expressions from this, because it's a little bit too hard. But once you have this as a given, then to go from here to here, all you really need is application of, I always forget these terms. Uh, to tell you the truth, I never actually took um, multivariable calculus properly. I just took upper division electrodynamics and they counted it as a multivariable calculus <laughs> in my school. Um, but to go from here to here, it's an application of, I think, a Gauss's theorem. Is Gauss's theorem something you learn in Math 3C? Yes? Yeah. So this is an application of Gauss's theorem. You do a volume integral on both sides. Right hand side becomes this. And left hand side simplifies to an area integral by using Gauss's theorem. Right? Same thing with this. And these, you use a Stokes theorem. You do an area integral on both sides. And right hand side becomes you know, current and closed and flux, all that stuff. And the left hand side becomes this uh, a line integral by application of um, Stokes theorem. So that's why this form is preferred. It's the simpler form. If you want to prove anything, it's a lot easier to start out with a differential form and then branch out from there. Um, the, we use the, the whole semester the integral form because the assumption is that you haven't taken Math 3C. Um, if you are going through the sequence that's uh, recommended for engineering majors, then you should be taking 3C uh, right now as a core record. So that's why I feel now a little bit more comfortable to talk about this form because I think, well, more than a more than half of you have seen notations here. So it's a couple of you who haven't, you know, this is not going to be on the exam anyway. <laughs> so, um, so the reason I'm introducing this form is I want to use this to talk about, um, talk about uh, the electromagnetic wave. So do you guys remember from end of last semester when we were doing physics 4A, um, the, what we called the wave equation, like rough form of that, yes? You remember the phrase, the wave equation. What was the wave equation, just as a qualitative description? Chris? Um, I, I want to say that it had, like, sine or cosine and it had the phase thing. Mm, you are thinking of the solution to the wave equation, right? So if you have a periodic traveling solution, you could write it that way. But a wave equation, it's a form of, I don't know if you guys remember this phrase, equation of motion. It's a, so it's a particular type of equation. 
Anybody here remember what type of equation it looked like? No, no one here? Yeah, I guess many of you probably haven't taken the class where you might have seen it. You would have seen it in Math 3F, the differential equations class. It's a differential equation. So the, let me write it down here as a reminder. So the wave equation, it's on, so we introduced it early, starting with Math 3C, sorry, Math 3C, uh, Physics 4A, because um, you are going to see this equation in every physics class. And it's important in um, some of the applications. So anyway, so let me write it down. So it describes a wave, um, which can be a wave, which is going to be a function of position and time. And this position is potentially a, it's a, a three dimensionally um, specified. And this function itself, it can be a vector and it also can be a scalar. So um, a scalar wave would be like a sound wave is a scalar because it's a wave of a pressure and pressure is actually a scalar quantity. It's not, a, it's like temperature and pressure, it's a scalar quantity. Um, or this can be vector also. In the case of the electromagnetic wave that we are gonna talk about, this will be vector. So if it's a vector, what you have to imagine is um, we are dealing with the x, y, and z component of wave. So, um, so you know, I can just talk about a single component, and if you're dealing with a vector quantity, you can extend it to other components that may be there. So you're dealing with a, an equation that describes a a function which is a, a representation of wave, and this is the form of the equation. It says the, um, let me write it down in 1D, and I will write down the version for three dimensions, but we're not gonna deal with it. The version for 1D is that double um, spatial derivative with respect to one direction, let's say x, that's the direction of propagation, that's the direction the wave is moving. Double spatial derivative of the function is equal to one over v squared times double time derivative of the same function. This is the wave equation. And this v, it, uh, the constant for this is written as one over v squared for a good reason. The constant that appears here does happen to be actual wave speed. Did all of this begin to look familiar? I know we covered it. This will, actually, you know, one of the reasons I'm making, I actually made the physics 4A exam cumulative, the final exam cumulative. One of the reasons was I was finding some people were getting through the physics 4A class without bothering to learn a lot about waves. I wanted to make sure that those people didn't get an A. So, <laughs> but you know, this is something that you are gonna see again. It's in a, it's not something obscure I'm bringing out of nowhere. It's, uh, um, if you take physics 4C, you're not going to see this a specific wave equation, but you do deal with the wave equation, the quantum mechanical wave equation. So the concepts we are discussing now is <laughs> something that will come up again and again. So um, uh, I guess while I'm writing that down, since I took, went through all this trouble to um, introduce these notations, so let me write down the three-dimensional version. The three-dimensional version of wave equation looks like this. You have, so this double spatial derivative, it becomes the gradient dotted to itself. So let me write that as, uh, I'll, I'll write it down properly. Gradient dotted to itself. So that gives you the double spatial derivative. Uh, or acting on f is equal to one over v squared. And you know, time is just time. It's not, um, I don't have to do anything special with it. So if we are dealing with the three dimensions, the only thing that really changes is the, um, 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 this portion of the equation changes to reflect that the wave can be moving in any three dimensional direction. You do have to still pick one direction to go, but it, you know, it's three dimensional. So that's the wave equation. And the reason I'm introducing this is because we are going to get an equation that kind of looks like this. 
starting out from these laws of electricity and magnetism. And I think I did uh, the derivation for you guys uh, last semester that, um, so I did a derivation for wave on a string. Um, as in, you know, we looked at the equation of motion for an, um, for an outstretched string, and we looked at what the equation of motion for this would look like. If I imagine that, you know, there's some bend in the thing and see what that would look like. And we got some form equation that looks like this. And one of the uh, payoff from that was when you are driving that, um, when you are going through that equation of motion, and when you drive an expression, I got out of that equation of motion, I got the uh, coefficient that would fit into this portion. And in case of wave on a string, this coefficient ended up being, I guess, uh, mu over t, where mu is the linear mass density, t is tension, and this meant that the wave speed on string was square root of t over mu. I don't know, uh, we spent, I'm pretty sure I derived it. Or you know, you can look at it in the textbook. But, so this would be actually one of the goals of going through this derivation. That, so you know, you are analyzing a medium that a wave can be in, and by going through the equation of motion that describes how the motion happens once you know, some part moves and there's a force on it, that one of the expected result from that is not the equation itself. You kind of have an idea that you are going to get to this. What you really are hoping to get that you didn't know before is what is the velocity? What is the expression for the velocity? So we are going to go through something similar here. We are going to start out with the Maxwell's equation. And we will go through some manipulation of these uh, formulas. We'll plug something into the other with the goal in mind that in the end, we want to get an express equation that looks kind of like this. And we'll see what coefficient ends up in this spot. And that'll tell us what the speed of this uh, electromagnetic wave is. Um, I guess for a lot of people, this is like uh, watching a, a detective story where you already know the ending. Um, so you know what the speed will turn out to be, but this will be the derivation for that speed. 